Hi everyone, it's time for this year's Makers Challenge. You might remember last year Theo Kellison challenged 14 rock hounds to make things out of their finds. Last year I made beads for my wife's Pandora bracelet and this year I was having a hard time coming up with an idea. So I contacted Thomas from 99 Rock Hounding and he's pretty artistic and creative and I said, hey, what should I make for this thing? So he said, why don't you try making an Oloid? So I then looked up what an Oloid was because I had no idea. And it's this oddly shaped object that doesn't look like it would roll, but it actually rolls really nicely. So uh, it's definitely going to be a challenge. I don't know if I can pull this off, but I'm going to try. So the first thing I need to do, and this is going to be a challenge in itself, is just to make a, a rectangular prism or a box shape out of a rock. And I need it to be like maybe four inches long and on the end it's square and a little bit smaller than four inches. So I was looking around for a rock and I, I couldn't really find much that was big enough to cut that big of a, a rectangular prism out of, but I found this one. It's a uh, it's pretty green rock. Uh, you can see I've already cut it. Uh, this has been sitting underneath my saw for years. I don't remember even where I got it. But I cut around here with an angle grinder and then I put a chisel in and broke it the rest of the way. That's why it's smooth around the outside and broken on the inside. So I think I can get a pretty big rock out of this. So what I'm going to do is put it in my saw. The reason I cut it is because this wouldn't fit in my saw without cutting it. Uh, my saw is a 10 inch saw but it'll only hold a rock that's three and a half inches tall. So I'm going to put it in like this. I'm going to take a slice off one side this way and then I'm going to turn it and take a slice off this way. And that will give me a 90 degree angle there to start with. Uh, but then it's really hard to cut a parallel cut. You have to put it in the, the saw just exactly right and it's just eyeballing it. So I don't think I'm going to be able to do that on that saw. So I've got an idea for doing it on the inside. Uh, so let me get those first two cuts done and then we'll see what I can do about the other cuts. So wish me luck. Got my first two cuts made and unfortunately it's off just a little bit. It's not exactly 90 degrees. It's, it's a little bit more than that. So I don't know if I'll have to fix that later or not. I'm going to kind of play it by ear as I go. But for right now I'm going to do my next cuts on this Fran Tom saw. This has a little fence over here. This moves in and out, maybe. Uh, but it's really short, and I just don't know with it being that short if I'm going to be able to keep the same width all the way along. So instead, I just clamped on a board here, and I'm going to run the, the rock along like this to make my next cut. This also has this vise on it. So this flips down, and there's a cable over here. And the idea is you put a weight on the end of the cable and that drags the rock through as it cuts. I've never been able to get this to work very well. It always rides up on the blade as it, as it approaches the blade. It kind of picks up. Uh, so if I use it, I won't use the weight. I'll just be pushing the vise through with my hand. So I might be doing uh, the end cuts that way. This actually isn't quite this long. Those are just there for reference. So I'm going to make that cut and then, then we'll see about making the other cuts. Alright, I worked on this for a couple hours last night and I can't say it's going too great. We'll see if I can make this happen, but uh, these two corners are sort of square. Uh, and then this is, if you look at the end here, it's just way out of whack. There's nothing that's completely square on this. So I tried really hard to use my little fence and uh, played around with different things with that saw, but I think I'm going to try my trim saw, and if worse comes to worse, I'll use a flat lap and just try to grind all that off, but that's going to take forever. Um, and that's just going to get this side and this side parallel, then i got to go back and square some more stuff up. Uh, it's much longer than it needs to be, so I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to be cutting some off there too. And it's a good thing because you can probably see how out of square that end is. All right, so I will check back in a little bit when I get some more stuff done. All right, I have it reasonably squared up. Uh, the flat lap ended up being kind of useless. It would have literally taken me forever to do it on there. I cut a little bit more on the saw, and then mostly I just ground it on the first wheel of my cab machine. So the next thing I've done here is mark this up. I'm actually following a YouTube video where somebody made these out of wood. 
But what I did is I made an, a 60 degree angle down in the bottom here. So right in the middle there, that's 60 degrees. And drew a half circle up on this side. And then on the other side, you do it upside down. So this side and this side match. And this side and this side match. So the next thing I'm going to do is cut out these circles. So I'm going to cut this off, this, this corner off on my saw. And then I'm going to go over to the cab machine and just round it off the best I can. That's the plan anyhow. My confidence level in this project has been fluctuating wildly. Uh, one minute I think, oh, this is going to be no problem. The next minute I think, oh, I'm not going to be able to do this. I didn't show you this, but the first thing I did when I was cutting off the corners for these, these circles here, uh, I missed and cut right into the circle. So I redrew the circles on the opposite sides because this is all going to get cut off anyhow. So I had to redraw everything, so that was another 20 minutes. <laughs> and then. Then I'm, uh, I'm, I'm pretty happy with this step. I've got the circles cut nicely. I think everything looks pretty good there. It's not perfect, but it's not too bad. Uh, now I've run into another little problem. I need to redraw, let me get a good side here. I need to redraw these lines. So remember there was a, up at the top here, there's supposed to be a 60 degree angle. So I thought, well, there's no problem. I'll get a piece of cardboard and I'll line it up along there and then I'll wrap it around but you see I completely miss like up there where it should be. So I thought, well shoot, uh, what do I do now? So I thought, oh, that's, that's easy. I'll just go from here up to there with the cardboard. So I put it on the corner here and I go up there and I'm way off from that angle that I drew before. So that's not right. Then I figured if you take a ruler, you line it up along there and you kind of eyeball across there, that's where I want it to be. Uh, and I can't do that by wrapping anything around there. And I can't draw a straight line by rocking the ruler back and forth. So I was kind of stuck. So I tried on this side to hold the ruler in the right spot. And I eyeballed it. And I just took a, so I'm looking at it like this. And I just took a marker and tried to mark it. But it's all, it's all crooked and kind of horrible. Um, the problem here is that I, I'm not just cutting this off on a saw. If this was wood, I just cut this, I'd make some sort of a jig, I'd just cut straight across there, and I'd be all set. Uh, but I'm trying to cut this roughly with a saw, because I can't cut that accurately with my rock saw, I found. Um, so I get it roughly cut that way, and then I'm taking it over my cab machine that has round wheels on it, and I'm trying to make a flat surface with round wheels. So it's it's all kind of complicated. So... I just remembered that I have this laser level. So I think what I'm going to do, I'm going to hold the laser level. I don't know how I'm going to hold it exactly, but you see how I'm getting the right line right about there? So I'm not going to film this because it's going to be hard enough just to get it all clamped together. So if I can get it held steady like that, I'll just draw along that line. I light a little bit. I am going to show you my setup. Uh, just put a clamp there, uh, there's the top part. Uh, it does fade out a little bit here, but this has a thing where I can change the angle on the top, just dial this little wheel. So I just dialed it till it lined up about right. Somewhere around there. And now I'm just gonna trace that line. That worked out pretty well. I'm not unhappy with that. The same thing down here. So I need to cut these off here and here and that's going to involve cutting with my saw first and getting somewhat close and then I'm going to finish it up over on the cab machine. I think I can, I think I can, I think I can.
All right, so here's where we're at. Got two of those cuts done. Came out okay. It looks pretty flat, I think you can see on both sides. This one's maybe a little bit wonky, but not too horrible, I hope. So now I need to cut these off, which presents a little bit of a problem. So as I set it on the, the saw table like this, it's going to want to tip back like this, and I want it up like that. So I'm going to take one of these pieces that I cut off, and I'm going to tape it on there. I'm just going to wrap some masking tape around there and it should leave it fairly level as I'm pushing it through the saw, I hope. Alright, it's coming along pretty nicely here. I did a little more reading on this, and uh, one site had a pronunciation guide, and it said it's pronounced Oloid instead of Oloid, like I said. So, not sure how accurate that is, since there was only one site that had a pronunciation guide, but that's what I read. Um, this was invented or discovered, whatever you want to say, by a German mathematician and sculptor by the name of Paul Schatz. And some sites call him Swiss. Uh, one place said that he was born in Germany and he lived the second half of his life in Switzerland. So that's, I think, where the confusion comes from there. So anyhow, the next thing I have to do is round off these edges so they come to a, a point along there. So this will be like sharp. Uh, and then on the bottom part, I've got to do the same thing. I'm going to round these off to come to a point here and over here. Uh, the part that's got me a little bit concerned is the transition. So this is going to be sharp, and this is going to be sharp down here. But I'm not really sure what happens in the middle, so I guess I'll just sort of taper it in and meld it together the best I can. So we'll see what happens. Off to the cab machine. Thought I'd stop and show you what I've been doing. So I'm focusing on this line because it has to come to a point right along here. So I'm getting closer and just round this down. And I, I'll do like this side, then I'll flip it around and do this side, and then I flip it over and do this side and this side, and then there's like four more pieces over here that I have to hit. So I'm working on them all equally just so I can kind of see how it all fits together. Just taking my time and going around slowly. Go back to work. Okay, I've got it all finished, but before I show it to you, let me just show you this little model I made to help explain the shape a little bit better. So as you can see, it's two circles that intersect one another, but one's turned 90 degrees to the other, and the edge of the black circle is at the center of the white circle, and vice versa. So if you remember at the beginning, I started with a block of stone that was square at the end, so this diameter and this diameter are the same, so that's where you get your square. And then that the length of the side of the square, or the diameter of the circle, is here plus another half. So that's why it has to be one and a half times longer than the side length of the square in the end. So then picture this whole thing covered with like a fabric or something, or shrink wrapped. So if there was a covering over all of it and it was stretched tight, it would go straight from one part to the other. So like from here to here would be straight. Any way you'd look at it, it would go straight from here to whatever the highest edge is over here. So that's the way I tried to make mine. So here's my finished product. You can see the circle on the top. And then if I turn them both 90 degrees, there's the circle on the bottom. And if you look at this along this way, when I was grinding it, I was just trying to make this straight. I was just eyeballing right across here and trying to make it as straight as I could. It's probably not perfect, but it's, it's pretty close. So, 
from the top of this to the edge here, straight line. So the idea is this is supposed to roll in a really cool way. So let's try this one first. This board I have down here is tipped up on the right edge. And it's supposed to roll in a straight line. Mine does not always roll in a straight line. It tends to curve a little bit, so I don't know if I have a little lopsided. Perfectly possible that I do. But it still looks kind of cool rolling. Turn it around this way, see if it goes to the right now. It's right. No, it's still going to the left, so it might just be that my board's crooked, although the, the paper one went pretty well. Remember, this is the Maker's Challenge, so there's 13 other videos to see from other creators. I'll leave a playlist here, plus a link to the video that I did last year where I made beads for my wife's Pandora bracelet. Thanks for watching. See you next time.